Oh, what this was going to be. Oh, what we were going to say. That it was a slug it out, grind it out, Eagles win. That this was perfect Philadelphia Eagles football. That Jalen Hurts went to his toolbox and used every one of them, it seemed. That Saquon Barkley had 22 sweat-stained, thigh-pumping, thunderous carries. Devontae Smith with crucial catches. A fourth-down stop of the Atlanta Falcons just when they needed it to get the ball back. That's what we were going to say. Instead, we watched this stinking loss. The home opener, when everybody was so excited, everybody was so happy. Happy. It's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. Only in Philadelphia can they snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Right. Oh, speaking of jaws, I got them right here. Yeah, you got me. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. They wanted Jake Elliott. They wanted to get it down there so he could put a field goal in. His long was 21. Connor Barwin said, I'm not playing anymore. It was a tough, tough, tough loss to watch. And Barrett, as we see the guys coming off your impressions of what now is the first loss of this young Eagles season. Well, we knew they weren't going to be perfect. Um, we just got to understand. Perfect. Perfect. There's things you got to do. You know, you got you to go out there. You got to pass rush. You got to play good defense. You got to tackle. Those are the basics you need to play football. I mean, you run the ball successfully, and then you turn around, you give it back to the defense. Defense can't stop anybody because there's no pass rush. Uh, I, I'm very disappointed on how those guys tackled and pass rush. You know, Kirk Cousins, we knew where he was going to be at. He was there all night, and we just couldn't get to him. It's terrible that, you know, the elder statesman gets closer to a sack than anybody else. We got one sack by Williams. That's all we had. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is a hurt piece right now because I just didn't have anybody out there that could get some pressure. It's everybody. a hurt piece. And how much of it is on Jalen Hurts? To me, it seemed like 2023 all over again. I mean, this team, you know, you like to think that they're over what happened last year. A lot of changes, new players, new coaches, new coordinators. But this is the kind of game that the 2023 Eagles lost. What, what did I say when Barkley dropped that ball? They're going to yeah. lose this game. And we they, said, no, I'm, they're not. I'm, I'm shocked you said I, I chuckled. I laughed. They're not going to lose this game. They, they lost just, the game. They lost the game I, because I just don't think they have the mental toughness. Everything Barrett said is true. The pass rush, run defense, all that stuff. They just don't have the mental toughness to make a play when they have to make a play. And it caught up to them. Last week, Kirk Cousins looked like he was a washed-up NFL quarterback with a, with, a, with a bum Achilles. He goes 20 of 29. For 240 yards and two touches. With the game on the line, we got a quarterback. There's a statue back there. Where is all this money that Howie has spent on this pass rush? Non-existent. Didn't, couldn't, couldn't sniff Kirk Cousins with the game on the line. That's an embarrassment to this defensive line. Embarrassment that pass rush. Yeah. They had to go 70 yards in a minute 39 seconds. And that's when sure. Ruben they Frank said, all of it. the Eagles all of it. are going to lose this game. And we all shouted him down, saying, no way, don't even think about it. And sure enough, this statue, as we called him pregame, and Kirk Cousins sat there and shredded it up. And he did it. Here's a question, and it's a hindsight question. I understand it. But in hindsight, would it have better to run Saquon Barkley instead of passing the ball that he and he ended up dropping the ball. Now that was right his hand. Play call. Yeah, make the catch. Great play call. You got to catch the ball. Look, he's a beast. He was great tonight. He was great Friday night in Brazil. But Saquon Barkley has to catch that pep right in his hands. That's the ball game. Bottom yeah. line. Bottom ball line. game. Yeah, catch the ball. Line. It's over. None of that ever happens. Catch it. Lay down. Game's over. Get you know. Get in the locker room. Have some fun. This is a crushing defeat, and for all intents and purposes, this is the first game of the season. We, they Certainly they played in Brazil, and they won that game, but this is the home opener. We had such high hopes for this team. They were five-and-a-half-point favorites, the Philadelphia Eagles, as we welcome you to Eagles Post Game Live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Barrett Brooks, Ron Jaworski, Ruben Frank, and we'll be hearing from everybody across the street after this tough 22-21 Eagles loss, as, as brutal as it was unexpected. It really was. I thought somehow, some way, they were going to win this game, and, and they, I, I don't they know if they were Jalen was playing terrific football. He was carrying the team, throwing the football, running the football. They weren't getting a, a hand on. They wouldn't glove. He had a lot of time. The line was great. I mean, this game was over. It was over. We thought it was over. Ruben didn't think it was over. He ended up being correct, but... This, 
it goes back to this pass rush. I mean, I, you know, if, it, if they don't correct this fast, it could be a really long season. They were you, got, you, got, you got Carr coming up on Sunday. They just, they're putting about 40 points up every week right now. They got it going. You know, it's crazy. It's frustrating. The edge rushers don't have a sack in six straight games going back to last year. They don't have a sack in six straight games from an edge rusher. That, that's impossible. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I didn't see I, – I see our defensive end getting bullied. You know, these guys are getting around, close Barrett. to get pushed around, to get yeah. thrown on the ground. Too many guys on the ground, you know, throughout the entirety of the game. I mean, we paid a guy $51 million for four years to go out there and rush the passer. He has shown – he's not shown anything better than what I saw in, you know, in Brazil. I, 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 I chalk it up as, all right, it was a messed up field. Uh, nobody could get there on the outside because in order to, you know, rush the pass from the outside, you got to turn the corner, have great ankle bend, and they were getting, you know, or feet were getting slipped from underneath them. No, they just can't pass rush. I mean, it's I don't see Bryce Huff get within 10 feet of a quarterback in no. two games. He was bullied. He was pushed around. But here's the other thing. As poor as their pass defense was, they were gashed. Uh, uh, B. John Robinson averaged seven yards every time he carried the ball. Tyron Algier averaged six yards every time he carried the ball. And they were running it as good as they were passing it. Right, right, right. I mean, why even pass the ball when you can run the ball as efficiently, efficiently as they were? They were very efficient on how they were just, I mean, they were just you know, running zone. It wasn't they, they were running any exotic runs or anything like that. They were just running inside zone, outside zone, and Tal Azure and uh, Robinson would just pick a hole, bam, hit it going downhill. They weren't even, you know, they weren't even pass and go. They, they just run past our defensive line like they weren't even there. Jay, it was Jalen crazy. Carter and Jordan Davis have been huge disappointments through yep. two games. Just not making plays. It's just been invisible. With, with, the, with less to do with the scheme than what you just said? I mean, schemes changed, but, the, you know, the product hasn't. Uh, I, I, I mean, Jalen Carter was pretty good last year. Jordan Davis wasn't, but uh, I haven't seen anything. I think Jalen Carter had one decent pressure tonight. As far as run stopping, I mean, just, there's nobody stopping the run on this uh, team. At all. I and, thought and, it was as bad as the pass rush. And I also believe we saw when Cousins had time, he could pick apart the secondary. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. you warned us of that I, pregame. I just, you mentioned it pregame. It, it's, it, and then here it was. It, it, it actually came to pass, technically, technically. Um, um, I'm not going to say anything about, you know, guys, you know, this. Uh, what I'm going to say is I saw an inefficiency at setting the edge on the outside. I don't think Huff knows how to set the edge on run plays on the outside. I mean, he, he didn't have a clue. You know, he would get, you engage the tackle and go inside. When you're the outside guy, you got to set the edge outside. He's the end ga uh, guy on the line of scrimmage. He would hit the guy, and he wouldn't even try to fight past the uh, tight end and get no pressure. Of the, you know, penetration kills all run plays. He did not penetrate not one time in the run game while he was out on the field. Fair. It'll be interesting when, when any analytics come out where they're running football. From, from my watching the game, it seemed whenever they needed five or six yards, run right. Yep. Run yep. to their right side of the Atlanta Falcons. They were just yep. gashing left side of our defensive yep. line. Yeah. Uh, here's the play of the game. At the, excuse me, the drive of the game. I said the play of the game because it felt like one play. Uh, presented by our friends at Hyundai. It was six plays, 70 yards, and the drive time was one minute, five seconds. Like that. With the game the on the line. I thought he left Jalen too much time. If anything, they scored too <laughs> fast. Yeah, you, you're right. Fields didn't put up a fight. Mm -hmm. They did not put up a fight on that last drive. You want to see something, somebody come up and make a play. Should they have done anything else technically to stop them? They rushed for outside Bryce Huff. Well, besides, that's okay. Hang on, let me write that down. That's, outside Bryce. That, that, I, mean, that, that's he, I mean, I think the you know look the, the red zone defense has kept him in both games. Yep. If they weren't really really good in the red zone, they would have given up 35 points in each game. I'm just worried they don't have the they don't have the personnel on defense. That's what it's looking like yeah. after two weeks. Yeah, they well, just don't have the players. We, we talk about. I'm not even going to talk about schematically whether they should be there or should not be there. Sometimes you don't worry about the schemes. You worry about guys out there on the field going and making a play. You know, I saw a huge play when you need to step up, when you stop the run, and and CJ GJ went and made that Jordan play. Made you got to turn around. You got to say, all right. I need to be this guy and go make a play. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to go out there and do that. There was times we know I'm, I'm on the field. Look, I got to block Mr. White, Mr. Reggie. I got to step up and make a play. And I did the best I could to stop and stop them. I didn't see anybody step up on the defensive side of the ball and say, look, here I am. 
I'm about to do it right now. And we don't have anybody to step up and be that guy. We had somebody, had somebody named Hassan Reddick. You know, maybe maybe it would have made a difference had he been there, but that's... What That's if. last year's yeah. news. What, well, what, what, what if? if? What if? I mean, yeah. what if? Now, New Orleans next week. I mean, the schedule keeps rolling on. And Tampa. And, and yeah. Two undefeated teams the next two and weeks. Tampa. On you so, can't afford to lose a game like this. It's gonna, it, this, this one, this is gut wrenching and it's going to hurt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's going to hurt for why? The, the reboundness for that football team is going to be tough because they had a game that we all believe, except Rube, that they should have won. <laughs> well, they should have won it, but I got, I'm, I thought they were going to lose you, I'm it giving you love. Barkley yeah. dropped that pass because the Eagles, their margin of error is not big enough to drop that pass and then still win the game. They're just not good enough. And, I mean, the defense was getting gashed all night. So what made you think they were going to stop them when they had to? How much do you put on the head coach for this? I mean, I put everything on the head coach just because he's just because he's responsible. I mean, him and Howie. I, mean, I think Howie. It's it's starting to look like there's some missteps in in roster building, but it's a little too early for that. But uh, look, he's the head coach. I know he's not the defensive coordinator, but he didn't drop that pass. But he's ultimately responsible for every win and every loss. Mm -hmm. and, and the drop pass will haunt Saquon Barkley and what was his homecoming, yeah. Whitehall High School. And he comes back, Penn State. And you, don't, and you know, you don't want to be too tough on the kid because he was incredible all night. He but, was. You know, that's a play you have to make. Yeah. If you're the bell cow guy, you got to catch that ball. He's probably caught a thousand of those in his career. Clean. In a row. Head in his hands, started looking, looking up the field, took his out one second. All I had to do was catch the ball and fall down. Game's over. Fall catch down. It. Fall down. Yep. Fall you down. you give any consideration to not kicking a field goal there? Do you give any, you know... We kicked the field goal, but they, they just you mean on the second possession? Yeah, uh, going for it. No, no going for it, no. right there. No, no. I mean, it, it, you, you end up game, the, it's easy to look back. You got to have some faith in your defense. Yeah, that's not. You got to have a little game. faith in them to stop. You know, if they get the ball back to stop them. It, it was. I mean, you'll you'll take a hot pipe going, the hot knife going through butter. Having the lead in the last minute, you know, and a and a third and whatever it was, I mean, you'll take that situation. So, no. I wouldn't right. second guess anything up till, till then. So, so do, we, do we have any kind of uh, body of work now in two games that we can look to and be concerned going forward with regard to the defense? I mean, pass rush. Yeah, yeah I, no, I understand pass that. Pass do, rush. Do, do, do pass rush. Do you see that getting pass rush and run D? Do you, do you see it getting shored up? I mean, from, where's the help going to come from? I, I don't know. I mean, uh, look, this, they're going down to the Superdome on a short week to face a team that's got the fourth most points in history, in NFL history, after two games. The Eagles had the ball for 36 minutes in the game. The offense controlled the ball for 36 minutes. The defense only had to play 24 minutes on that field. And they still couldn't. I mean, they, they were rested between every series. And you know who's starting to concern me? Is number two, because he was not good. Well, and he's one of the few guys who you kind of say, at least they have Slay. He's, you know, he's still one of the best corners. He was not good tonight. No, no, he, he wasn't. You have the winning touchdown. I'm not sure what happened on that I, last I play. Also, I also She's thought, position. you know, a la what, whether you call it Joe Montana or Tom Brady or, or name your favorite uh, all-time, Ron Jaworski. Thank you. When you're in that, you're welcome. When you're in that, you are a Hall of Fame nominee uh, for the Pro Football Hall of Fame along with Seth Joyner and Mike Quick. Congratulations all. And Bill Berge. And Bill Berge, uh, number 66. But here's the thing. I expected that Jalen Hurts, if you want to be that level of great, I really thought there was a chance with the timeouts remaining that something was going to happen because they only had to get it to not that, that far. Another 15 yards for, and you before got Jake's yards right. Yeah, yeah. Jalen played a terrific game. I, played a, he, he carried the offense. I mean, Saquon obviously ran the ball very well, but I thought Jalen had an outstanding game. He did what he had to do to get the team in. He looked fast again. Game. He looked powerful. I think I think he, he had made had a mindset that he was going to run pe run over people once he it, broke the pocket. It was like a redo of the Seahawks yeah. game from last year, for goodness sakes. Here's the other thing about Jalen Hurts. So he's back now to running that that amount yeah. of times, whatever it takes to win a game. And then when, you know when it's wrist or knee or or whatever, that's that's you can't look, we're, you can't, we're, we're you can't look at it that? that way. You can't you can't look at it that way. You just got to know you got to win football games. And at the end of the day, you know he's the quarterback. He's the leader of his team. You got to go out there and do it. Even the, you know the, um, the 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 last play of the game. You know he was trying to get the ball to the guy that he sure. would trust in. That's Smitty. Um, you know he couldn't step through. Uh, you know they ran a stunt and the guy hit him as soon as the ball. He let the ball go. So I mean that that happens. But we shouldn't even been in that predicament anyways. Never should have been. It should have been a caught pass. 
and for a first down, run the clock out, and 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 you caught know, pass for a about. touchdown. In, in, it might have been a touchdown couple, also. A yeah. couple of drives before. Yep. How about Kirk Cousins? Didn't run the ball worth a darn. He four carries minus one yard, and he he just stood there. He just stood there on that repaired Achilles and picked him apart. Well, and I'll tell you something else. If you can't sack Kirk Cousins, who exactly mm -hmm. are you going to sack? Mm -hmm. I mean, I said the most expensive piece of real estate in that stadium tonight was at five yards behind the center of the Atlanta Falcons. That's where you're going to find the quarterback because he ain't moving out of that spot. That's the real estate, and they protected the hell out of it. He did. Right. He didn't move.